Hi, it's Joseph, and welcome back to the San Miguel de Allende Secrets video channel here on the YouTube channel. Again, in the descriptive box below, there are links if you need more information, including a link to Amazon if you're interested in purchasing any of the best-selling books in the San Miguel de Allende Secrets series of books. And today, we're going to talk about aesthetics and faith, or basically what's a, uh, a Reader's Digest version of art history here in San Miguel de Allende. The Inquisition arrived in Mexico on a boat with Cortes, starting three centuries of the church and state working hand in hand. The church had centuries of doing so in Europe, controlling, in the process, the art market and took this expertise to the new world, making the church the most important collector and patron of arts in San Miguel de Allende. From 1520 to 1820, the major commissioner of paintings was clergy, as they were used to teach the new faith to the indigenous. For example, the Sistine Chapelish murals featured in nearby Totonilco, which pictured in the lower right-hand corner. And in that particular image, it's when uh, Judas is getting his 30 pieces of silver for turning in Jesus. And in any of the murals there, you can always tell who the bad person is in the mural because they'll have that dragon, monster, birdish creature on their back to let the viewer know, okay, this is, this is the evil one. But it wasn't just the visual arts. Music was composed but for the church, including songs that were San Miguel specific, like the music played for Mary's altars placed around town prior to Easter. Also, the oratorios were and are an order of priests named for a complex piece of religious music, as their founder felt it was music and laughter that brought one closer to God. The oratorio church featured the best choir in the colonial air and still provides organ concerts. Dance got a big boost with the appearance of Guadalupe, pictured there to the right next to the dancer, an image of Mary that became the mother of Mexico. In the image, Mary is getting ready to start dancing and clapping as that's how the indigenous pray today and then even in our ceremonies today. Following the Inquisition and the removal of Spain, the church resumed being a patron of the arts working hand in hand with the new government for the next century. Part of studying to be a local priest included learning how to paint, and many of the paintings in the oratorio in the Temple of Good Health were done by young seminarians at this time, like the one in the left-hand image near the uh, orange cat and the orange Maria doll. An interesting thing to note about colonial-era paintings and sculpture that feature hell is that an indigenous painter would often place clergy in hell to make fun of the Spanish. Though the inhabitants of hell are seen as nude, you can always spot clergy by their hats. This was also the time where fashion as an art was featured in the robes of priests as the representatives of God on earth. Glistening in gold with jewels, they dazzled the indigenous, and the best outfits were recently featured at the Met show, Heavenly Bodies, Fashion in the Catholic Imagination. The Constitution of 1917 separated out the church from the government, as post-revolutionary regimes viewed the church as a permanent obstacle in the consolidation of its power in the country's modernization. No more dressing like priests or nuns in public, no processions throughout the town, or the church handling education or owning property. Obviously, this new approach to separating the church from the state directly impacted the church's ability to raise money, and its budget for art patronage took a hit. It was a tough time to be painters back in the 20s. Local lads like Candelaria Riva, who made a living painting virgins and church murals, hid his paintings in a graveyard caskets and immigrated to Hollywood. Here he painted the Wicked Witch of the West Castle for the Wizard of Oz and replaced portraits of virgins with Hollywood goddesses like Constance Bennett, the blonde to the left, and Janet Gaynor, the woman with the fan to the right. Why folks like Frida and Diego artistically flourished at this time, the church retreated from the art market until the mid-century, when retablos made their mark for folk art collectors in the north. Retablos are license plate sized images featuring the painting and description of a miracle with what virgin or saint provided assistance. They were placed at an altar in appreciation. Until now, few signed their art as that was an act of vanity to try to associate oneself with God, the virgin, or saints. Northerners preferred their art signed and from this point on, retablos were signed. You can find retablos with present-day miracles from cyberbullying to bad credit in the chapel at Valle de Maiz. In the earliest 20th centuries, when Hollywood singer-actor Jose Mojica 
came to town, introducing Hollywood artists like John Wayne and John Ford to San Miguel de Allende. Jose Mojica built the Boys Orphanage, where in his museum you can watch his movies and listen to his albums, while enjoying the murals of the lads and dogs that lived there with him in the 1950s. In the second half of the 20th century, following Vatican II in the 1960s, the church encouraged a break with the aesthetics of its last artistic hurrah, the Baroque. Instead, Vatican II called for a simplification of art, architecture, and music. This gave rise to newer churches in town featuring more austere interiors with fewer objects on the walls and in corners. Also in time, simple circular churches became popular, like featured in Montez de Loretto, like guitar masses became vogue. In a letter to artists in 1999, Pope slash St. John Paul II advocated for an aesthetic of, quote, the sacredness of life and of a few human person. This suggested a renewed interest and awareness of art's capacity to articulate the dogma to Catholics and non-believers alike. Today in San Miguel de Allende, the church's influence over art is still seen all over town, not just in chapels. The mojigangas, like pictured there to the right, large paper mache puppets, were brought over from Spain to teach the lives of the saints, while their large hands cleared the way of any evil in a procession, a practice that continues with wedding parties having mojigangas lead the way from the mass to the reception. The paper stars on poles feature in almost every procession, like those in the lower left-hand mural, the red and purple ones, or in honor of Mary the Light, an image of Mary that is patroness of electricians that worked at the Fabrico Aurora throughout the 1900s. The rag dolls, like there in the middle, dancing, or up in the upper left-hand corner on the cover of the book, that are made by Atomi since pre-Hispanic times, are now called Marie and Jose in honor of Jesus' parents. The Katrinas, like featured in the Barbie cake there, the Katrinas at Day of the Dead bring the dead back for yet another party were based on the Aztec goddess of death, another example of the church using art to blend indigenous and Catholic beliefs. Public murals in town, like the one in the lower left, featuring faith-based faith themes of Guadalupe or St. Michael, by far outnumber other popular murals featuring history and nature. The intermixing of the church and art flourishes in San Miguel today in art dancing, music, fiestas, processions, and many other artistic expressions. As always, don't forget to click subscribe down below or like, and you'll get notifications of new videos as they come out in the San Miguel de Allende Secrets series of videos.